Clinical Applications of Digital Infrared Thermal Imaging, narrated by Dr. Dorothy Merritt. The human body is thermally symmetrical, and our normal heat or thermal patterns are constant and repeatable. Pathology will cause sympathetic change and, in most instances, thermal asymmetry. DIDI, or Digital Infrared Thermal Imaging, is a highly sensitive and totally non-invasive clinical imaging procedure for objectively detecting and monitoring many injuries and conditions in the human body. Because the human body is thermally symmetrical, we can use comparative views left to right to detect physiological dysfunction. Clinical thermography is just a simple test of physiology that relies on the sympathetic nervous system control of skin blood vessels and the ability of the sympathetic system to respond and react to pathology anywhere in the body. It is controlled by the central nervous system and pathology is seen along strips of skin called thermotomes. Digital thermography of the breast takes only five minutes and is a valuable tool for alerting your doctor to changing conditions in your breast way before it becomes apparent on physical exam or mammogram. Notice the symmetrical colors in these breast images. This slide illustrates the time it takes active cancer cells to double in a patient under 50. Notice that the cancer may be present for eight years before a mammogram detects it. Thermography allows visualization of changes much sooner. Notice that at two years, the breast changes on the left can already be seen in this image. In this 37-year-old patient, the first baseline thermogram showed a slight hyperthermic asymmetry in the right upper breast. A follow-up study showed the pattern had progressed. A mammogram was ordered and no distinct findings were found. A recommendation was to repeat the mammogram in one year. However, the patient continued to do thermography with progressive changes and demanded a mammogram in six months. At that time, a one millimeter calcification appeared. This was biopsied with a lumpectomy and found to be DCIS or ductal carcinoma in situ. The patient has now had stable thermograms for two years with no recurrence of disease. The results of this routine study led to the diagnosis of inflammatory carcinoma of the right breast. There were no clinical indications at this stage. Thermography can show significant indicators several months before any of the clinical signs of inflammatory breast disease, skin discoloration, swelling, or pain. Inflammatory breast disease cannot be detected by mammography and is most commonly seen in younger women. The prognosis is poor. Early detection provides the best hope of survival. 1% of breast cancers are found in men. The survival rate is much lower than in women as most breast cancers in men are only detected in advanced stages. This tumor was palpable at the time of imaging there is a well-established vascular feed that has even caused increased blood flow at the left brachial plexus, and there is also drainage toward the sternum that extends to below the left breast. Metastases were later found in other organs, and this patient did not do well. The skin as an organ has specific regions called thermotones that through the autonomic nervous system relate to every internal organ and structure. This patient has a hypothermic asymmetry over the left lower chest and has coronary artery disease. The decreased blood flow to the heart is reflected on this picture as the blue circle. He also has an abscess of the left fourth tooth as evidenced by the red and white inflammation around his mouth. This patient presented with low back pain, but there were no thermal findings in the back. However, the abdomen showed a well-defined area of inflammation over the right kidney thermotone, which could refer pain to the back. Subsequent testing confirmed a kidney infection. 
The primary finding in this image is the local area of hyperthermia over the hepatic flexure of the colon. Diverticulitis was diagnosed after clinical correlation with thermographic findings. The anterior view of the upper legs shows a patient who has unexplained pain in the right leg for over a year. The thermogram shows a varicosity with a perforator that vascular surgeon was able to treat with minimal intervention due to the accuracy of the location. The image showing the vascular pattern in the right lateral leg was of a patient who had had a three-year history of pain in the mid thigh and knee. Nerve conduction tests and a full range of anatomical imaging tests failed to find the cause for the pain. The thermographic study led to a confirmed diagnosis of phlebitis. Thermography uses the body's sympathetic nervous system control of skin blood flow as a window into the autonomic nervous system. A compromised immune function or autonomic neuropathy will always produce a distinct area of hypothermia over the T1, T2 region on the back. It looks like a giant blue bullseye. One hundred percent of patients with positively diagnosed autoimmune related conditions exhibit local hypothermia over T1 and T2. These patients all suffer from chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. The reliability of this phenomenon allows us to monitor the response to treatment and rehabilitation over days, weeks, or months. This image shows hyperthermia over both lobes of the thyroid, indicating thyroid dysfunction. This image shows the abdomen of a patient with hepatitis. The hepatic blood vessel, which normally closes after birth, has now reopened from the liver to the embolicus. That is the J in the middle of the lower part of the image. Referred pain syndromes can be difficult to diagnose. This patient presented with nonspecific pain in the lower right arm, which had been investigated with a number of different modalities. Thermography showed the thermal asymmetries between the left and the right arm that led to the positive diagnosis. When there is a brachial plexus entrapment or neuropathy, the sympathetic outflow is low and the colors are blue and green and much cooler than the opposite side as seen in this picture. Also there is inflammation up at the right neck area where the brachial plexus nerves are found. In this image, a trigger point associated with a specific anatomical structure can be seen. If this is included in the report, the doctor then knows where to put a trigger point specifically to take care of the pain. This athlete had a history of a recurring pain and stiffness in his upper left shoulder. One treatment, guided by thermography, resolved the problem permanently by identifying the myofascial trigger point that was causing the problem in the upper part of the left rhomboid. In this athlete, x-ray showed no abnormality, but thermography correlated well with the patient's report of pain and provided justification for a more invasive bone scan, which clearly showed a stress fracture in the exact location indicated by the thermogram. Although this hypothermic pattern resembles an S1 radiculopathy, it is a sympathetic reaction to the pain caused by a bony spur on the left heel. The hyperthermia in the right plantar foot is likely to be a result of a long-term weight transfer off the left heel. Objective monitoring of the effects of various treatments can be recorded with thermography. In this comparative study over time, a significant change in the temperature differentials in the medial left leg is due to the acupuncture treatment. The entire region of interest is seen to cool, but the local areas of inflammation in the medial knee changes and reduces at a much greater rate. We can do this same monitoring whether using skin patches for pain or acupuncture or medical treatments. In this image, of the posterior cruciate, 
there is thermography evidence of strain of the left knee. However, the vascular damage that is identified below the knee on thermography was not initially identified with typical diagnostic monitoring. This woman basketball player had been carrying an injury to her right foot, which was a stress fracture in the navicular. Thermography showed the effects of the weight transfer to her left knee, as evidenced by a giant red area of inflammation that is red with white spots in it. Complex regional pain syndrome occurs with injury to a limb. Treatment options and success rate depend on early detection, usually in the first three months. The sympathetic shutdown of the nerves is so severe in this foot that the toes look thermally amputated. This condition used to be called reflex sympathetic dystrophy and can lead to permanent disability and pain if not treated early. Temperature differentials are important when reporting results. The objective evidence of thermography supports a subjective opinion and can help in decision making. In this case, there is neuropathy in the fingers of the right hand as evidenced by dark blue color versus green and light blue color in the left hand. In this slide, you can see early stage bilateral carpal tunnel syndrome on the left. You can see that the fourth and fifth digits are cooler than the rest and that there's inflammation in the wrist, evidenced by the red and white. Later on, after no treatment and when there has been chronic nerve damage, you see the changes where the entire hand and arm becomes blue and the fingers are cool. This is a case of chronic regional pain syndrome or RSD of the left hand. You can see at the top image on the right the glove-like hypothermia. Below is the return of normal sympathetic function after treatment. In this slide, you can see 60% occlusion of the right carotid artery as evidenced by red and white inflammation along the course of the carotid artery on the image on the right. In conclusion, thermography is a great tool to detect disease that is not apparent yet. It is also a great tool to narrow down and direct further workup when nonspecific symptoms are present. Ask your doctor about this technology today.